It's that time of year again. Ah! Where it, it's that time of year again where it goes from I'll give you the Celsius in just a second, but it goes from 47 in the morning to 87 in the afternoon. That's mm, basically awful. going from 8 to 30 every day. So at night, we have the little space heater out, and in the afternoon, we need the fan going, and sometimes we have them both going at the same time. Yeah, it's awful. Yeah. Oh, we're getting a cold front. Sweet. Good. Look, it'll be down Moisture? to 60s now. For the highs? In uh, next week. Awesome. 60s. Great done with this heat i would i just it's always a gamble here but when you have a big thanksgiving dinner that's coming up you really want it I to be cold actually against the heat rick is against the heat for like a month and then he's like i want summer back I, I, <laughs> not, uh, Hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction. Of course, don't hate my love. <laughs> you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, for juicy content. Everybody supports our Patreon, follow us Twitter account, subscribe, like button. Today we have a uh, interview. It's a 2012 interview with Shah Rukh Khan. Awesome. Oh, well, Happy birthday. To, yes. To the Rook himself. Am I right? You're right. Uh, people call him the Rook. They do. Uh, I do. Yeah. Uh, this is called Think 2012: uh, The Journey of a Dream Catcher. The Journey of a Dream Catcher. Um, this is a very popular. Uh, interview people have been asking for a while and so this is it here we go great <laughs> Shabra Khan being his adorable well articulate you. self Bran One pixel in that entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> you ever get mistaken for a bird? Constantly. Yeah. Especially in profile. <laughs> it's more of a turkey. <laughs> it's a bird. I don't want to talk about they don't fly. <laughs> I don't want to talk about who he is, but I do want to share three very short stories with you. About four or five years ago, I was trying to reach a man. I sent about two dozen SMSs. There was absolutely no response. It was like sending a beam into outer space. And then in utter frustration one day, I sent an SMS saying, Shah Rukh, do you exist or are you a unicorn? And in three minutes flat, I got a call back. We spoke and then we decided to meet for a story. I went down to Bombay, I went up a hill, there was a studio there, the sun was setting, there were charred buildings everywhere, men with walkie-talkies dressed in black, guns, a sort of hush in the air. And then suddenly, somebody dressed in a red suit, in a sort of Superman cape, swooshed into the air, holding a woman, a beautiful woman, in a red dress, a long split down her leg, they whooshed up into the sky, the cape flying, and then this man and this woman came down, and this man said, Uri Baba, my name is Mohabbat Man, let's dance. <laughs> and then a year later, we met at Bonhams in London, and two legendary people had agreed to paint a canvas to help fund the Helka that was going through extremely rough times financially. And we held an art exhibition there, again, where the artist community supported us hugely, by painting canvases for free, and we wanted to auction this, raise funds for the journalism. Bonhams is a very elite auction house in London. The biggest crowd they've ever seen is 300 people. We told them maybe 450 might turn up. And then this man walked into Bonhams, and Bonhams had 1,800 people in a hall that could accommodate 300. The auction was a washout. Nobody knew what was happening. But everybody's eye was on this one man. His friends say that for him and for others who wait for him, time begins when he arrives. He's here today. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Shah Rukh Khan. Oh, they're talking about Shah Rukh Khan. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, good evening, everybody. That was a weird cut. And, uh, 
I have auditioned for many parts, but for the Think uh, Fest, the auditioning happened and I was passed by Shoma straight away when I said, Uli Baba, I'm Muhammad Man. <laughs> so this guy is smart. We have to get him for Think. So thank you, <laughs> thank you, Tarun, thank you, Nina, thank you, everybody who's involved with this. And uh, that's it. That's it. Yeah. That's fun. <laughs> Shah Rukh, okay. So before before I start, so I because because I was told one of my friends, Sanjoy, my oldest friend, oldest in terms of years that I've known him, he's told me this is like an intelligent gathering, and uh, so you uh, actually prepped for it. I was yeah, aghast yeah. when uh, Shah Rukh's uh, colleague called me and said, Shah Rukh wants to know what you're going to talk about. Are there any questions? And I was like, Shah Rukh's asking for questions, you know. Yeah, so I've, but, I've become careful now because you never know what they'll come and write about you. You know these. <laughs> I am scared now, yeah. I'm, I'm a little scared of what I say. So I, I have written something. Is it okay to read it out? Or? Um, yeah, but can we do the conversation? Did you bring your book? I just wanted to... Uh... That's why I don't go to any place where stars are considered less than the anchors. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm here now, so I'm <laughs> Shahrukh, you know, when I asked you to come here, I, I told you that the really unique uh, experience that I wanted our audience to have is that Shah Rukh is in the process of writing his memoir and his autobiography. And about two years ago, we met and he shared a, a, some snatches of that with me. And they were incredibly moving. They were an aspect of Shah Rukh that you don't really get to see very often. And that is the framework of our conversation today, you know, the public and private journey of this dream catcher. And, and that's how I'd like to enter the conversation with you, Shah Rukh. You know, the, the, the piece you read to me was about your parents. Uh, both of them have been very seminal uh, in who you are today, and yet they were both very different people. Your father was a freedom fighter, he was an idealist, uh, you know, very accomplished man, but a poor man. Uh, and your mother was much more of a pragmatist. You know, can you, can you talk to us about what they meant in your life and how they've ch influenced you in different ways? Yeah, my father, I, in the book that I'm still writing, which has been now, uh, you know, I, I decided to write the book when I thought I would last uh, after four or five years into the film industry, I started believing that I will last for 10 years. Sorry, technical glitches. Hopefully that's the last one. I felt I've climbed in 20 years. Uh, I'm a little tardy with it. I still haven't finished it. Now it's 22 years that I've been working. The book is still not complete. Um, and, you know, when I, in, in the book, the chapter that I made Shoma read, uh, the main, uh, how do you say, the exposure of my inner self is that I think my father was the most successful failure in the world. And I'm very, very proud of him. And um, I remember him as a gentle, uh, as a very gentle person, six feet tall, very pathan, gray eyes, brown hair, very handsome. Um, I also remember the first time I went to Peshawar with him. You know, I love that. Thank you for that. Over six feet, two inches, very fair, very beautiful. And I remember the whole family met me first time and I was about 14 and they say, they speak Hindko there, like Punjabi. And they looked at me and said, <laughs> <laughs> You know, so I'm, I'm that kind of Pathan. And uh, he, he, he taught Pathan. me a lot of things. <clears throat> I, he died when I was 15. And... Uh, and as Same age and Johnny lost her dad. The things that he's told me. I remember he took me out for a movie. Uh, never told me we belong to a place where you know, in terms of finances, lower middle class or however it's described, we don't even have the money. Um, he used to travel in buses 501, 502, 502, 502, Delhi wali 502. And uh, he took me and uh, he didn't tell me money's run out. So he made me sit in the there used to be a roundabout near Kamani Auditorium, and we bought Moongfali. And he said, Yaan baithenge. Or gaadiyon ko, he used to also speak a little bit of Punjabi. He said, Yara, gaadiyon ko aage piche jate dekhenge. Sab se achcha hota hai. And he never told me. My mom, who was Hyderabadi and uh, a little more uh, pragmatic, as you said, and a little more talkative and loud, she said, Hmm, tumko buddhu banai ho na. Ja ke vahan pe kuch nahi, paise nahi the, to isliye tumhe gaadiyan dikha kar wapis lekar aage. So my mother was uh, extremely, uh, I think after he died, she kind of dedicated her life uh, to look after us. And the essence of both my parents was that they didn't know what we'd become. My father was a non-practicing lawyer because he said he can't lie. So sorry if there are some lawyers here. He was the youngest freedom fighter of this country in terms of age. 
and uh, my mother was a magistrate but she was like a go getter and you know very enthusiastic and uh, after he died uh, she carried on the dream my father had that we should make sure that children are well educated <clears throat> if they get educated life will be okay for them of course i wasted all my education i've done sciences then economics and then masters in mass communication and i became a film star <laughs> and uh, so it's kind of doesn't come handy when you're doing you are my chamak chalo <laughs> so um and that's it so i remember them i think i've imbibed the fear of failure that i saw my father go through and i didn't want to fail like him i want to take my son out if i promise him for a movie i want to show him a movie not the cars around and around about so that was fun too and uh, <clears throat> the enthusiasm and the energy that my mother had to earn money so that you know she could look after us and educate us they both died i think between the ages of 49 and 50 i just turned 47 day before yesterday so it's a little scary thought but mm -hmm. uh, uh, it it was an education which makes me a very pragmatic practical poet i think <laughs> yeah it makes me a very commercial poet i think it makes me someone who has dreams like my father did someone who's as gentle as i am notwithstanding the mumbai cricket association incident we'll come to that yeah. uh, <laughs> oh but uh, <laughs> Yeah so I'm 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 a believer I'm a little idealistic and utopian and thoughtful and gentle like my dad but I want to do all those thinking and write all those poems with a stomach full of food and have a good car and a good house so I don't deride myself or deprecate myself when I say I'm kind of capitalist it is just that I am a survivor who wants to live well and think well and I think all youngsters should believe that if you isolate one of them i've been hearing amazing amount of dedicated work from some of the people extremely educated and highly positioned jobs leaving everything and looking after um, a cause which is close to their hearts i would like to do that but being from the place i believe which is kind of honest i'd like to do it with the money that i earn from this capitalist this in your face business like job that i do so i i want to uh, i am by I think both the things that my mom and dad taught, and I still miss them a lot. Yeah, in fact, yeah. Uh, Shah Rukh he, he used to run a tea canteen uh, behind the NSD, and you were thrown out of your house once because they couldn't pay the rent. Hmm. Are you going to tell everything about me? <laughs> <laughs> this is sting operation, yeah. This is stuff you've told me, you know? okay. <laughs> and not not with any privacy uh, clauses, <laughs> okay. but. you know in fact in an interview some years back and i'm i'm just why i'm asking you all this is because it's very much the man you are and you know some of that comes through in the tweets that you do at 3 o'clock at night and 4 o'clock at night not when you meet you on the stage or in the cinema screen and you said that your sister you know your mother died in very difficult circumstances and you said your sister also is a kind of daily reminder that you cannot have the life that your father has you know your father lived and your father had can you share that with us you know what really happened because a lot of that went into making you the kind of superstar that you are yeah my father died of uh, a cancer uh, mm. throat and liver started with throat and uh, i remember the last few days uh, <coughs> he couldn't speak so we used to play dumb charades and uh, you know we used to kind of um, he used to write stuff then he couldn't write stuff so he would say call um little and then brother or sister so i i i remember this was at all india institute of medical sciences at the jang hospital and um uh, and he obviously like any father was in love with his uh, daughter and she was very beautiful everyone used to think she looked like jane from meri puri family bahut sundar hai so uh, she was extremely beautiful and um uh, when my father died I remember he, he was getting well then I went to the hospital one night and he was dead and cold his feet his feet were very cold so I touched his feet and he was very peaceful and dead and not looked like the handsome pathan he was swaythen and uh, I had never driven a car I was 15 and I remember my mom and me sat in the car to get back home a driver who had waited all night couldn't wait any longer had left the car abandoned in front of the uh, main road and I sat in the car and drove back <coughs> and I do remember my mother when we reached home she said 
तो मैंने गाड़ी चलाना कैसे सीखा एंड आई सेट कब सीखा एंड आई सेट जस्ट नाउ एंड आई वॉज ड्राइविंग रखा आई केम होम माई सिस्टर वॉज इन लेडी श्री राम कॉलेज एंड वी डेंट टेल हर दैट हर फादर आर फादर वॉज हैज पास टू वे सो आई वेंट आई गॉट हर एंड आई रिमेंबर दिस एंड बिकॉज आई एम अ सोल सेलिंग कमर्शल एक्टर वन डे आई वीज दिस इन अ फिल्म ऑल्सो शेमलेसली बट नाइन्टी नाइन परसेंट ऑफ द थिंग्स दैट आई यूज सो शेमलेसली इन फिल्म इज एन एक्सपीरियंस विच इज वेरी क्लोज टू माई हार्ट एंड समहाउ लाइफ हैज टॉट मी इट्स ऑल राइट टू शो द इनर मोस्ट ऑफ माई फीलिंग्स इन द कमर्शियल सेंस नॉट टू अर्न मनी बट जस्ट इट्स ओके इट्स वन लाइफ सो आई विल यूज दिस आई रिमेंबर माई सिस्टर स्टैंडिंग इन फ्रंट ऑफ माई फादर्स पार्थिव शरीफ बोलते हैं हिंदी में डेड बॉडी एंड शी जस्ट लुक शी डेंट क्राई शी डेंट से एनी थिंग शी जस्ट फेल एंड शी हिट अ हेड ऑन द ग्राउंड एंड फॉर टू ईयर्स आफ्टर दैट शी डेंट क्राई शी डेंट स्पीक शी जस्ट केप लुकिंग इन स्पेस वाह एंड इट जस्ट चेंज द वर्ल्ड माशा नाउ शी इज बेटर शी गॉट सम डेफिशंसीज ड्यूरिंग द मेकिंग ऑफ माई फिल्म दिल वाले दुल्हन ले जाएंगे शी अगेन वॉज हॉस्पिटलाइज एंड दिस सेट शी विल नॉट सर्वाइव I took her to Switzerland. Uh, got her treated there while I was shooting. तो जब देखा तो ये जाना सा ना. Hmm. And uh, but she hasn't ever recovered from the loss of her father, the suddenness of him passing away, and then it got compounded because my mother also expired ten years later. So we are what in Muslims is called yatim and yasir, father and motherless. And uh, when I see her, <clears throat> especially the time period from my father's death to my mother's death. she was highly qualified she has done mllb very intelligent um like my parents wanted her to be but she could not face the reality of losing her parents mm. and i somehow developed the sense of detachment the sense of false bravado which i show in public uh a sense of humor and a lot of things that i do which people think is flamboyant and very bollywood like to cover up mm uh <clears throat> the sadness affecting my life and me becoming like my sister i love my sister how she is she's a much better person than i can ever be i think she's a, a child of god and very naive and innocent my kids love her more than they love me and my wife and i'm very glad she's a part of our lives like this but i don't have the guts to be so simple so hurt so disturbed mm. so a part of me keeps on working around the clock keeps on being happy in spite of things which are said about me or make a joke about things that i do but still keep doing them because if i did not do it i think i would be in the same state of potassium deficiency and depression so to avoid depression i act um mm. it's much larger than to earn money or be a big star or do endorsements or dance at weddings which i joke about and this is the god's honest truth i think this is the most honest i've ever been in my life to anyone Sharuk, before before we move away from this this series of central events that happened in your life, and you know how how it continues to pursue you, would you share with the audience that that snatch about your father passing away? Did you bring it with you? I'm sorry, I have it on my laptop. I I you know I tried to print out a lot of things, but technologically we are a little challenged still. You had it on your Kindle. But yeah, I, 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 if I can get the laptop, I'll okay. I'll ask them to bring it and do it in a okay. moment or two. Okay. Yeah. So we, we, we'll, we'll come back to that. Have I screwed up major with this disorganization of mine? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really sorry. I, okay. Hello, sir. Okay. Okay. This. Ah, uh, okay. This is very small, but I'll still. Uh, I'll, 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 this is an incident about uh, <coughs> this chapter is called the train to Pakistan. I finally learned that life isn't a timed test. With the goal is to make a list of shouldas, couldas, wouldas on January first and finish as fast as possible, with every answer correct and be perfect about it. I, I have taken saying what wisdom I said and started my chapter, so I won't read the whole chapter and bore you. But I'll, I'll describe the portion when my father, who had taken me twice to Peshawar. um and we had gone always through uh, amritsar walk through to lahore where i even did a film called veer zara which brought back a lot of memories 
and I cried there because I had done the same with my dad. So I'm just reading you the last part. Where the second time we went, every time my father uh, told me a lot of stories about how wonderful his uh, hometown was, Kisa Khani and Lahori di Hatti and kitne log khush the aur kitne achhe the. My father, uh, by the time I was born, wasn't doing well business wise. Wives, as they are always, were, you know, tum kuch karte kyun nahi kind of a thing. So I think he needed to go back to his past to keep on telling me uh, how wonderful it was. And he took me twice to Peshawar. This is the second time in 1980 when he took me. So I'm just reading the last bit, which I read to Shoma. My father got me back to Peshawar once again in 1980. The second time round was also turning out to be as exciting. But without my knowledge, there was something else taking place right under my nose. I was told by my father's friend that all this niceness that my cousins were showing me was to impress my father into leaving his share of property in their names. I still don't believe that was true, but my father seemed to be dejected when we returned back to India. My father was always very proud of his family and their achievements, but in retrospect, I think that his going back to his family was not as great an experience as he'd anticipated. He was a very loving and gentle person, never having screamed at us or reprimanded us. He had left his house when he was 16. He had tried desperately to try and make things work in India. I think at times when he felt he hadn't succeeded with his duties to his family in India, he had taken courage from the fact that his family in Pakistan had brought him up well, and he would be able to fight back. Maybe his journey back home was to refresh this resolve, and he had taken his little son along to give him a taste of his lineage. I think it was like trying to revisit his past and pass it on to his future. It's like when you are a little lost, you try to retrace your steps to figure out where you went wrong. But the past had changed with time; it was not the same for him. The memory of all the anecdotes and good times he had collected with pride over the years seemed tainted by the bickering and fight for something as menial as the possession of his property rights. He had got his son along to introduce him to his proud past, but the past wasn't there, and what was left of it was not something to be proud of either. <clears throat> Instead of finding out where he had gone wrong, he realized that the beginning itself was a mistake. He was too far gone to start all over again. Neither side seemed to be his. He was in the no man's land. I remember him crying while walking along the no man's land between Pakistan and India, and I felt sad for him. Little did I know, by the time we got back, I would have to start feeling sad for myself. My father was beginning to die. Mm. Mm. And uh, this is this is an incident where I remember. Is this the book that the uh, lady from Film Companion between wrote? Between India and Pakistan, and he kind of. Anupam Chopra. Said to me, mm. she wrote know, his like, memoir. Right? I know there are a lot of uh, confusing discussions about India, Pakistan, and I'm I'm okay if this leads to some kind of controversy. But uh, uh, you know, he 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 was like, "Yara, tu wahan chalega na, to wahan pe." Somehow he just told me, "Khana bhi better hai, log bhi achhe hain, pyar bhi bhot karte hain." And he used to keep telling, "The bamboos are better in Peshawar." <laughs> I don't know for some reason. I've never found that out. Yeah, bamboos are better in Peshawar. And uh, and you believe your father whatever he says. So till my dying day, I remember the best <laughs> bamboos come from Peshawar for some reason. Yeah. And I remember he was walking in between the no man's land, and he started crying. And you know, to see your father cry is like a mega thing for a 14-year-old kid. And he said, uh, "I said, but it was really nice." Your country, and he said to me, you know, actually, I'm feeling like neither that nor that is my country. This is my country, the no man's land that he was walking. Mm. Because he somehow felt he's not succeeded here, and his, uh, uh, you know, his past was not good enough to take him through where he wanted his son to be. And I truly believe that visit, not because of his cousins and his brothers, you know, that whatever that's a young kid's uh, belief, but I think he just got so completely wasted. By the fact that uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> neither of the two things were working for him, his past or future. And I think he died that day while walking back, uh, because he died about three months after that. He came home and he fell sick, and uh, <coughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> in spite of people telling me politically not to go to Pakistan, I have other reasons <laughs> which are a little more personal. Hmm. Thank you. Understandably. Yeah. Sharuk, we'll, we'll come back to some of those early years, but there was another interesting uh, spectrum in your life. You know, the kind of guy you were in Delhi, 
and the man you have become in Bombay. And you were two very different people. Uh, you know, can you share with us the kind of college kid you were, tempestuous, I won't add on to the adjectives you tell us yourself, and how you've designed yourself uh, mm. as a superstar? Great I was question. Like this, very elegant, always what I do. Yeah, how you've designed yourself. St. Stephen's wanted me to study there, but I said, no, yeah. <laughs> Not that. He's, he's quite know, Matthew I, I Perry in his self effacing. Of the people yeah. here you know? Festa from Delhi, they will understand. Um, are there lots of Delhiites here? Yeah. I'm a Delhi boy. So uh, uh, there is a bit of. Uh, uh, being a Delhi boy, like being a, a New Yorker? I would imagine. And, uh, I, I think uh, that in, same in kind of yeah, the I proud, say, the proud I, sense, I and also yeah. aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I was, I was kind of like that, brought up like that. I was in an Irish brother school, so I was having this strange uh, dichotomy of being brought up where you know everything was where you know everybody spoke like that and talked like that and you know. In the morning, we said the morning prayer, and your shoes are not shined, Mr. Khan. So I was called Mr. Khan even. As a matter of fact, I was called Mr. Shah. Because, uh, yeah, because... What about Rook? Khan till you're 18, so my name was Shah Rook. And my Irish brothers thought that either my name is Mr. Shah, my parents' name, or Mr. Rook. So, <laughs> yeah. So I was like, you know, Mr. Shah. So I was Gujarati for a, a part of my... <laughs> <laughs> so I... Uh, uh, so I you know, I, w I used to play hockey, and you know, in Delhi, everybody just fights for the rights. <laughs> <laughs> nice reference. Yeah, nice and, um, you know, so uh, I was brought up like that. When I came to Mumbai, I got into a lot of fights, a lot of fights. And uh, I didn't understand the stardom stuff. I'm from Delhi, you know, you talk nicely, everybody has to be well-mannered. I'm very well-mannered. I'm very courteous. I'm very, you know, that's the upbringing I have and the Irish by the school in Columbus, so, so I'm very well mannered, but Bhattamizi mujhe samaj nahi aati. So the first time when I came, I remember there was a magazine which I was just talking about uh, downstairs uh, with Tarun and everyone, where, where they kind of uh, put me on the cover of a magazine and had written a line that I had sort of been, uh, uh, how, how do you put it, decently in a think fest, uh, physical with a uh, co-actress, yeah. And I hadn't been. You don't have to get that decent shit. Uh, okay. <laughs> so I was banging the shit out of the. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love him for saying that. Irish <laughs> brother school. This is the Delhi wala part. Ah. I didn't understand this, you know. And you know, you have a young girl. So good. I met my wife when she was 14. I just got married, she was about 22, for her, this guy becoming a movie star, what you think of Bollywood, or in that time it was just the Indian film industry, and you know, she was so uh, worried, will I be doing what supposedly movie stars will do and do in the films apart from acting, and this whole thing came out, and I'm like, you know, but this is not true, and so I called up this lady, and I said, um, you know, why have you written this? So she said, Charu, it's a joke. She's a joke, but it's not funny. <laughs> Lady, do you hear me talking and uh, laughing? And I wasn't saying it like this. My Delhi wali kata, teri pandi, tu jai hasi It wasn't her mistake, I think, but she didn't understand what I was talking because, you know, I was speaking in Delhi language. Tu mahi pe rukam, mein aata hoon, tu mahi dekhta hoon. And I went there, I fought. I beat up people and I did some really, really nasty stuff, which is a natural thing that Delhiites do. They don't know in their other parts of the country it's considered nasty. <laughs> So I, I behaved really badly, and uh, I was jailed. And uh, I'd, uh, my, my father-in-law had given me, as they do in Delhi, in Punjabi weddings, a sword to carry on the ghori when I got married to my wife, Gauri. And um, uh, I carried that sword to that journalist's house. <laughs> <laughs> You're exaggerating now. Yeah, my father-in-law had told me, uh, he's an army officer, so he said, son, make sure you protect my daughter. <laughs> Nobody was saying anything to her daughter, but I, <laughs> I thought this is a good weapon and uh, it's sanctioned by the Indian Army, so I, <laughs> <laughs> so I went there and um, I remember that young boy, uh, he's shifted to Vancouver since then, 
Uh, yeah, yeah now, now that I've become a gentleman. Um, so he, he was sitting there and, you know, in his shorts and the whole office was sitting there and I took, it was a kukri actually, it was not even a sword. So I took the kukri and I stuck it between his legs. And I don't know why, like an idiot, now that I think of it, I looked at his parents and I said, you know, I'm gonna cut him up. And, and the poor, you know, this old couple were just sitting, they didn't understand anything. They were like, you know, so many other people have come for dinner and a chat. <laughs> why is this gentleman behaving like this, beta? And why is he trying to do this with a sword between your legs? <laughs> and uh, so I got into a big fight. And then one day, I was next day, and I thought I've done the Delhi Wali thing. Ki pan ke agli bar kisi ne kiya na, kaat dalunga, to dalunga, pho dalunga, tumari maada. Like, kind of, I've repeated my dialogues at MCA. Zinda gaar dunga, zumi. I did all that stuff. And then I went away thinking I won this battle. Next evening I was shooting for a film called Kabhi Haan Kabhi Na, which is one of my favorite films and I was doing a show, uh, I was acting like a comic Don, uh, ironically. And cops came who were very sweet. And they talked to me, they took pictures with me and then they said, you know, Saab ne aapko bulaya hai. So I said, yeah, yeah, of course, I'll come, yeah. My mother was a magistrate. I've been in jail in Delhi many times. And my mother, uh, you know, these things work in Delhi. You can kind of make a call and say, meri mummy magistrate hai, so very sweet. <laughs> So for a few fights and all, my mother had get, gotten me out of uh, the lockup. So uh, mom wasn't alive, but they took me and they, and they took me after six o'clock, so I can't get bail. And uh, so <laughs> I remember I, <laughs> uh, there's this gentleman, uh, Inspector Mr. Khan, and I went in and you know, with my swagger, this was the chair, he was standing there, and I'm like, yeah. No, if, I was from Delhi, so I used to walk like that. Just, you know, so I stood and I was, and I said, yes, what's this? I said, Petroni! <laughs> Cut it off, up here. Oh, no, I'm... What? And I'm like, Aaj meri maa zinda hoti na. So he put me in a lockup. And then he said, you're allowed to make one phone call. And that's when I realized I'm cut out to be a Hindi film hero. Because instead of making that one phone call to my family, friends, or any lawyer that I would have had, which I didn't, I made the call to that guy who had reported me. <laughs> and I said, Saleh, now I'm going to jail. And now I'm going to get out and I'm going to cut my hair. And, ah, uh, is this going to get me in trouble? <laughs> I doubt it. You think and it, if it will, you're well prepared. You've had long yeah, training. I mean, you know? This RTI, India Against Corruption, won't take out these papers and put me back. <laughs> okay, so I, I do remember that I went back to the guy's house. There were cops outside his house. And I asked for a light from one of the cops who was very still. Oh, Shahrukh Khan, Shahrukh Khan. He lit my cigarette. I opened the window, looked at that guy. I said, I'm coming and get you now. I'm going to be very mean to you. I threatened the, everyone in their office. But then, you know, it so happened that I was, they put my fingerprints and, you know, then this uh, Inspector Khan Saab told me, revenge tastes the sweetest when it is served cold. <laughs> so, that was 19 years ago. I'm still waiting for that when I come to Vancouver. Se <laughs> <laughs> I, I just felt I was very embarrassed. And I decided to change myself because the wife was very disturbed. Nana Pateka got me out of the jail. Nice. Finally, Nana and he was very sweet and uh, on a weekend, there is an evening court that gives you bail or something. And uh, I tried to be decent uh, and I kind of have changed now. I try to be the more Irish brother school educated than the Delhi University wala hockey player. And uh, yeah. Sometimes the Delhi ka gunda jumps up again. I, you know, what I'm feeling very bad about is that, you know, some of the people have started saying that it's my midlife crisis. And uh, I'm having a meltdown. You know, so I was telling Tarun backstage, you know, Sanjoy and everyone, that there YouTube. So if there YouTube, then there are fights So if there are these fights, then it seems that it's coming, it's coming, it's naturally coming. So I just want to say this, and all you really intellectual people, I, I'm not going through a midlife crisis. I'm good. I'm really good. I'm, I'm cool, yeah. And I'm... <laughs> I'm just going through the Delhi phases once in a while, that's all. <laughs> Sharif, the other fascinating strand in you is your uh, relationship with Islam and with being a Muslim. Over the years, 
you become more overt about uh, just identifying yourself as a Muslim, you know, and you're not a political person at all. Uh, why did you want to start doing this? And, you know, you also say you're a real chauvinist and you're an Islamist chauvinist, you know. So how do the two things uh, sit together? I don't understand this combination. I'm getting scared big big words you're using with me and all. But I, to be honest, like, um, I have been uh, uh, living in Delhi, like I said, and I have participated in Ram Leela. I have studied in Irish Brothers School, so I have been uh, uh, made to, um, in every nice way, I know the Ram, Ramayan very well, um, the Mahabharat very well, because I used to act in them and, you know, whole Punjabi atmosphere. Uh, because of my upbringing in St. Columbus, so I know the Bible very well. And it, it's very strange. I never thought I'd be an actor, but I've enacted pieces and bits in school, at, uh, on the stage, Chhabla Saab Ki Ram Leela and stuff, in Delhi Patel Nagar. And, uh, and by birth, I'm, I'm a Muslim, you know, I'm Islamic. So uh, my father and mother, in a very nice uh, uh, way, have explained Islam to me. And as I've grown now, and I have kids, I, 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 I'm very secular. My wife's a Hindu. And, uh, um, and I, I've never tried to impose my religion on her, neither has she ever. Uh, you know, but I, I really believe, uh, to be very honest, each religion is about being easy with each other's selves and each other's religion. So I am like that. But now when the kids were growing up and all this was happening around the world, um, I just felt that my parents have always taught me and my understanding and reading about Islam is that we are very peaceful. And uh, so in no political way, as you said, in no chauvinistic way, as you mentioned, but the way I only know through a film of mine, maybe, you know, so I was looking for an opportunity, which I got in my film, My Name is Khan, that I want to say that, you know, it's an extremely peaceful religion. And that's all I want to impose upon even my children, that if they can learn anything from Islam, being now Aryan Khan and Suhana Khan, uh, I think the only thing they need to really take back is the fact that it's a very peace-loving religion. And they are growing up in times where every bomb that is being bombed every bullet that is being fired is uh, supposedly by Muslim people, you know. And uh, I, I don't want my kids to have that kind of an impression because I truly believe that uh, maybe most of these guys, or at least a big majority of these guys, do not really stand for Islam. They stand for their own agenda of whatever fundamentalism they want to uh, get through or their political ideologies or whatever issue they have with nation to nation or person to person. But I don't think necessarily they stand for Islam. So I started reading all over again in the languages that I know, English and Hindi. I started speaking to some really wonderful people like Javed Sam, who might be here tonight, you know, explain to me, my friends who are like really um, well versed with Islam. I speak to them, I talk with them. Inshallah, I'd like to do the Hajj with my kids. And, uh, but the imposition of my religion would be to the extent of saying that it's an extremely peace loving and uh, wonderful religion. And uh, uh, the film was for that. And uh, uh, though, like again, my behavior lately does not really, you know, like my son can turn around and he, we have a great sense of humor. So this is a joke, please don't take it wrong. Uh, I'm saying this, but like, you know, my son does not. And I got into this fight with another person at night and, you know, I came back and I woke them both up. I'm very embarrassed about how I behave in films, off screen, everything that I do with my kids. <laughs> So I woke them up and I said, you know, I, I slapped a guy and, I, uh, and I'm really sorry and stuff like that. And my son, and this is a joke, so please don't take it wrong. He said, that's, that's very like a Muslim Baba. <laughs> so, uh, so I don't want him thinking like that. Like, and we joke and we say things like, uh, Wallah, you know, like this. And uh, the thing is that I've been able to bring them to be able to joke about it now means I'm on the right path of explaining to them that Islam is an extremely peaceful uh, religion, like I'm sure Hinduism is, and Buddhism is, and Christianity is. Sharuk, uh, you know, before we start talking about some other, uh, you know, phases and aspects of your life, did you bring that part, the first page of what it means to be a star? You know, you, the first page of your book, uh, you're kind of watching yourself flying. Did, did you bring any other bits of it? I have now the whole laptop. I've got the script of my next two films if you want me to read them out. <laughs> but, <laughs> 2012, so that'd be... Uh, yeah, see, uh, this is, this is actually, sorry, trying to figure out which chapter. two films those. Oh, okay. So, oh, sorry. That I, that I printed out. I thought maybe after I've 
read my opening speech, which you haven't allowed me to. <laughs> I read out my last chapter of the book, so it'll kind of make everyone feel what a wonderfully organized and grounded talk we had tonight. Um, but but this is this is really true. Uh, this book was like I said, I wrote it. Uh, I started writing it long, so my daughter was only four or five, and this chapter is written, now she's 12, eight years ago, and this would be, this will be the last chapter, I'm filling in the rest of the blanks, but I think this will be the last chapter. I started writing this book while I was standing jumping for a movie called Pribhi Dila Hindustani uh, from a 16-story building uh, onto an airbag, and I do not exaggerate, I have done that, and, mm. uh, uh, and, and this thought came to me that I, I should write a book because Bhatsa, Mahesh Bhatsa had told me. So the book starts, I was going to say the movie starts like that. The book is like a movie and now it's the last chapter and I'm still standing there. So <clears throat> a lot of it has to be updated. So please um, uh, bear with me, but this is eight years ago. It's been one hell of a trip. It's been one hell of a life. A busted knee, an ankle which needs repair. A big toe which is much bigger than any big toe. <laughs> A neck which has one disc less and is still capable of doing the boogie woogie. <laughs> Let me also share a secret, I dye my hair. I've been atop a train and under a moving truck. I have romanced in oxygenless Ladakh and fought in the slush. I have jumped from multi-storied buildings and hung from cliffs. I have stood in the same frame as Mr. Amitabh Bachchan. I've been hugged by Rakhi. Dilip Kumar has patted me on my cheek and praised me for playing Dev Das. Madhuri Dixit has danced in front of me for nine nights. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Chavla has made coffee for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kajol has bought me books to read. Amrish Puri has shared a dirty joke with me. I have met Madonna. I have met Madonna and said hello to Michael Jackson. Harry Potter has stood and talked with me for 15 minutes. I have said the namaz in the deserts of Egypt, close to the pyramids. I have climbed the Eiffel Tower. People in Japan know me by name. Mothers in Indonesia and Guyana call me their son. Hmm. Yash Chopra and Subhash Ghai are my friends. Mani Ratnam thinks I can act a bit. <laughs> Urchins on the road copy my way of talking. Barber shops on the roadside have a haircut named after me. I have a nice house and lovely children. My son thinks I'm a hero. And this is eight years ago. And my daughter thinks I'm Amir Khan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she was young and stupid then. <laughs> I mean, she was four years old. So on, at home she knew I'm Papa. On TV she used to think, and she used to see me and take that name, ironically. <laughs> <laughs> and then there is a star in the sky, which I talk about in the chapters earlier, which I think is my mother, like mm -hmm. every child does, which shines extra bright with happiness when I go out, stand on my terrace. It's like I have lived two life, lifetimes in one. I have crammed 20 years of experiences and happiness in a decade. What am I, Spider-Man, Superman? No, I think I'm blessed. There are times when I feel, I still feel lonely. There are days when I feel very sad at my failures. The sea in front of my bungalow makes me feel just as little as it did 10 years ago. I cannot answer a question which is asked to me in every interview. What is the real Shah Rukh Khan like? I don't know. Mm. Maybe there is no real left, real me left anymore. Mm. Maybe there is no real emotion left, which I haven't done in front of the camera already. Maybe I'm just an act now. Sometimes I don't recognize my face without the makeup on. Mm. Sometimes I don't come alive till I hear the beginning, the sound of the Ariflex. Ariflex is the camera. Oh, this is a thing fest, everyone would know that. <laughs> Some days even the sound of the camera and the lights in my eyes don't help me to feel real. The boundaries between the real me and the real me have faded beyond repair. Do I love like Rahul or does Rahul love like me? Is it Raj's anger or am I angry playing Raj over and over again? I know I would never throw a girl off a terrace, but I'm not sure if like Devdas, I would destroy myself for a girl. Mm. Maybe, maybe not. Would my son grow up to be normal? Would my daughter realize I'm not Amir Khan? I don't know and I don't care really. Have I paid a big price for being a star? No. If I was given a choice, I would do it all over again and would be willing to give even more. Would I die happy only if my last film was a hit? <laughs>
As for now, I'm looking forward to the next 20 years. Just when you thought it was safe to assume I will retire now that I've written a book, I'm going to subject you to another decade. <laughs> the green cloth is fluttering behind my back. The 40-odd feet don't seem too much. I know why I do this. I do it because I'm an actor. I spread out my hands, close my eyes. I can hear the storm fans loud and clear. I see my son's face. He thinks I'm a hero. He knows I have wings. I know too. God is kind and with me. Mm. I also know I can fly. I let go. I'm flying. And so is the rest of the world with me. To be continued after a decade later. <laughs> I, I know I have a publisher who's going to kill me for doing this, but no. Farooq, I can't believe the bell has rung before I even began to start talking to you. Okay. No. Um, so are you going to root with me and tell me to get out of here now? <laughs> Why, no chamak chal ho? <laughs> um, just one or two more questions, if you all will allow me. We are, um, we, we are running short of time, but Sharuk one sees these fragments of you, you know, the <clears throat> public self of you is somebody completely different, flamboyant, you know, as you said, somebody who loves wading into crowds. But there's an element in you that's always alone, you know, you're always, uh, as I said, at three o'clock, four o'clock at night, your tweets are always about this separation of self uh, from the public. Why has that persisted over the years, you know, has, has nothing filled up the vacuum in you? Uh, honestly, no, and uh, I, I don't know, I, there is something wrong with me, and um, I, I, I sense it, I feel it, but I don't know what it is. I, I love to act, or so I believe, as far <laughs> as now is concerned. Um, I always want to keep working to fill in the time. I have a beautiful family, they're very loving to me, and uh, I'm, I, I get really, uh, uh, the only happiness I get is when I'm with them. I've got a few friends who love me a lot. I spend a lot of time with them. But I find myself, um, sometimes my personal life and my public life. And I try to give. I'm an actor. I'm supposed to give. And whatever people say about me in terms of he's like this, he's like this, he's like that, I know sometimes and I know it honestly. There is no other reason for me to be doing this than to fulfill a desire to give. I don't wake up anymore in the mornings thinking how many crores my film has made. I don't want to know which star has done well, but I can't explain it because sometimes with all their good intentions or silly ones, people only ask me this. How do you feel this star has done this? How do you? And I get angsty and angry, but I control myself lest I'm put in jail again or fight again. So I control myself and I put up a brave front and I keep on acting and I make it flamboyant and I make it humorous and I make it fun. It's very nice to be, and I'm saying it honestly, I somehow feel that people here will at least, if not completely feel it, understand what I'm talking about. And, you know, every day, um, the reason to go and act is not like I said, the crores or number one, number two, or number 203, or 40, 45, and uh, 100 crore, and 200, nah, I don't want it anymore. I've got everything, much more than a boy sitting on the roundabout in Kamari Auditorium watching cars go by because his father can't afford to buy a film ticket can have. You can't take that away from me. You, can't, you can take away the awards, the money. You can't take away the fact that I became Shah Rukh Khan. I became somebody else, really. And uh, so, I, so, so, so why do I do it? And this is deeply emotional for me. So why do I do it? And I've only said this here. <clears throat> I only do it because I know somewhere, in some strange place, a lonely mother with a strange child is just having a great laugh watching one film of mine somewhere. And <clears throat> when I think of the reason that I do what I do this for, whether it is because I lost my parents early, I can't keep on harping about it. Everybody loses parents and it's all right. Get over it. Do I do this because, you know, yeah, I, I worked hard, I became a star and X, Y, Z and now the money is important, the awards, I've done enough of that. But somewhere there is this feeling of emptiness which I started to share in Twitter, but that also became 
uh, sound bites for television and tabloids. They take it out of context and put it, and I can't explain to them. So I have this restlessness, this uh, loneliness, this strangeness, this unfulfilledness, uh, which I feel I'm going to fill it in with as much acting, as much I can give, uh, but it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. And um, so I, I now have dedicated my life to come out in public and give you what you want. Uh, if you want me to dance, I'll dance for you. If you want me to sing, I'll sing for you. If you want me to um, stand on my hands, I'll still do that. If somebody says he's not a serious enough actor, I'll accept it. If somebody says, you know what, he's too flamboyant, he's not the guy who's going to do socially relevant films, that's all right. I've done one Swede, so I'm not going to do ten of them. I'll do what I feel like, but I will do most of the time things that I think you want me to do. There is nothing left in my life, I feel, that I want to do for myself. So it's a very strange, selfless, selfish place. Hmm. I have, as I said in the beginning, I think turned into a commercial poet. So I have the thoughts of a poet. I want to do good things, I want to do creative things, I want to gentle, but I don't want to... Uh, <clears throat> I don't want to die like my father did. And I don't want to be unknown uh, despite being the most wonderful father, despite being the... <clears throat> I don't know, I, as much as I love calling my dad, a successful failure. I'd like to be just bloody successful. That's all, honestly. And, and they're right when they say, I didn't believe it. But believe you me, it is very lonely at the top. So you have to, you have to, have to be lonely when you try to be successful. Sharuk, you said you'll dance for us, but... <laughs> Because this is Think and you've made it so special, I'm going to allow you to read what you brought, finally. Do you have time? It's a, we'll, we'll stop with just one thing of that you want to read. Okay, so whenever you want to stop, just stop it, okay? I'll stop. Mm, just say, cut! Cut! All right, okay. So I, I really, genuinely, I, I, this is really nice. Thank you so much. Um, I've had, uh, I don't, it's so strange that some of the personal things I would like to discuss with my best friends, not that Shoma is not my best friend, but it's nice to share it with everyone. I don't know. I've. Uh, uh, these are very, yeah, so thank you, thank you, I, I was, I've been very depressed for the last two days, I have no reason for it, I just romanticize as the dark space that creative people go into, but uh, thank you very much for listening to all this, it's making me feel very happy, so I'm gonna drink a lot, and, <laughs> first and have a great evening with you guys, but I, I'm, 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 I'm thank you for allowing me to read this, um, <clears throat> this is a little part of a poem that I read, I prepared this in the plane for you, Shoma, and for Tahel Khan, everyone here. Uh, and it's not, in, it's not in any sequence, it's just thoughts that were coming because I was sent your email that it's about the solitude of being a movie star or a superstar. So, <clears throat> so it's a part of a poem from W.H. Auden. That's how you pronounce it? So I wish you first a sense of theater. Only those who love illusion and know it will go far. Otherwise, we spend our lives in a confusion of what we say and do with who we really are. This is an uh, audience poem to a seven-year-old, I think, grandson or the son. Adulation has the distinct quality of isolation. You cannot admire that which you cannot distinguish as extraordinary. To be adored in the manner of stardom is to be brutally separated from the right to be ordinary. Paradoxically, this severance results in making nothing more stark to a man than his own ordinariness. Mm. I'm aware of it. He may layer it, hide it, or pretend it away but he feels it in the most naked of ways. Stardom presents a unique opportunity to accept or reject ordinary because the isolation it imposes has two aspects. One is to enable detached clarity, the other to cloud reality entirely. It is easy when faced with the truth about one's ordinariness to turn away from it. The way of the mist is to diffuse form. It is easy to unravel also. Hard to hold the imperfection of yourself and sift unbridled adulation into a genuine love for your craft and person. It is hard, but it is possible. It is possible when you begin to create for the sheer joy of creation or creating because somehow you're not in the business of destruction. Acting is an art form. It is often mistaken as the ability to pretend, but in fact it is the ability to mirror 
different selves onto the canvas of your own being. It is the art of becoming a new self with complete honesty. An actor true to his craft cannot reject his imperfections. He embraces them and turns them into creative force. Isolation enables the detached observation of himself and his world through which an actor can enhance this creative force. Detachment of a certain kind allows complex emotions to be worn like costumes. In my case, because I do commercial films, the costumes are very simple. Ralph Lauren, anger. <laughs> Dolce and Gabbana, love. Patriotic romance. Just about describes my complete emotional wardrobe. As the world changes, this interpretation is rendered more and more through various media. I become a cad, a philanderer, a womanizer, an abusive drunk, a callous, arrogant star who flouts rules and smokes indiscriminately in public. An anti-national, enemy-supporting upstart who ought to be taught a lesson and so on. Or a perfect family man, an astute businessman, a doting father, sex on toast, or even just a guy who smells beautiful. None of this has to do with who I really am, yet it becomes the way I'm perceived by many. Here is where my public journey deviates from my personal experience and sometimes pushes me into a more isolated space than I wish to be in. Detached or attached, the one thing I cannot avoid is what my persona is interpreted as seen from the outside. As honest and similar as I believe my public and personal appearances and beliefs are, I do get overtaken by what people want to perceive of me because of being completely objectified over the last 20 years. My emotions and actions are all objects open for sale and analysis. I'm a billion dollar soul selling machine who romanticizes sleeping on Mumbai sidewalks before becoming such a beautiful object. But I do not gain satisfaction from the money I earn, from how many crores my movies collect, as I said, or whether I'm rated as number one, two, or 203. I never wake up in the morning wondering about who has become more popular than me. It is of no concern to me. I gain satisfaction from the aspect of my art that allows me to give. I feel satisfied at the thought that somewhere in a home I do not know, a mother and her little son watch my movie on an otherwise dull day and laugh at me. I gain satisfaction at the fact that people leave the cinema with lightness in their heart, feeling love, feeling the possibilities of romance in their everyday ordinariness of their daily lives. However unreal it seems to critics or lovers of reality, I serve reality with chocolate flavored popcorn, <laughs> available only in large size and fizzy, fizzy soda to go with it. Mm. And yet, this last bit, I heard the bell. And yet, I live reality in its crudest form, where every human defect and perfection is magnified, where every desire, every aspiration is stark like mine, where every power drives an enormous system toward its own growth and churning and even destru destruction. But it tastes bloody good. And through all this, I'm surrounded by a hundred managers and PRs and producers and financiers and audiences. And the only way I keep it sane is by clinging to the only person I know the best, myself, all alone. But to be alone amidst millions of admirers is no tragedy at all. It is beautiful, especially if you can use it to view the world as I began the speech with, a sense of theater. So welcome to my theater, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, the dream catcher. <laughs> Thank you very much, and I'm sorry for the next speaker having to wait. Thank you very much, everyone. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, AJ, for the subtitles. Stupid baby. Thank you for that. It was a, it was a stupid baby that did that. So thank mm. you so much. It obviously um, helps in understanding certain. Yeah. It was mostly in English, but they said certain things that he explained. Yeah, and certain always, context for things. We always appreciate that. Always love listening to Shah Rukh Khan. Always. Um, because we said he's... And, and people have criticized me when I say certain people are well articulate. Like, like I don't know why they would. Um, because certain people are well Yeah, why would you articulate like, that? Like, it's like saying that there's people who are well educated versus not. Regardless it's, of it's if fact. they speak English or a different language, you can be... <laughs> certain people are very well articulate and certain people aren't as well articulate yeah it's just how it is johnny depp is not an articulate man <laughs> correct <laughs> so like he's a very articulate man correct um he what he said and all as usual he what every, every, he has a very unique um 
circumstance in life that maybe two other people can probably relate to. Amir Khan and or a few other people in India can probably relate to. Yeah. Amitak Bakchan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Superstar Rajna Khan of right. the world. But um, very few others. Right. Um, but I love his sense of humor. I love his introspectiveness about his life, about his work, about um i just i love listening to him i think he's 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 such an easy listen he's such a fun listen because he doesn't take himself seriously but he also is very serious about certain things he says mm -hmm. as well i mm -hmm. love it i do too uh, did we see a clip of this before i think we saw i think we saw the clip of him going with the sword to the I think, or guy at least him talking and going it. to jail yeah at least him talking either heard that it. story before or saw yeah, an yeah, excerpt I, from I, this. i've known that story but yeah he uh boy um, my, one of my favorite takeaways among many in this thing was when he was talking about, he was reading what he wrote mm -hmm. about himself and questioned who is the real me and who is the real me. And I'm mm -hmm. sure what he was spelling was the R-E-E-L mm -hmm. me and the R-E-A-L me. Mm -hmm. And just uh, wonderfully introspective simultaneously lighthearted, quizzically deflective and defensive with humor, mm. yet at the same time, extremely transparent. Yeah. Um, very, very, like you, I can listen to him talk all day and I am still rooting for the time for him to not necessarily change it, but to, 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 to marry his passion for the craft and his passion for the audience in such a way that, you know, he said, I'll be whatever you want me to be. And I would love for him to feel full permission to be the, the actor artist that would want to tell the stories that are deeply personal like apparently my name is Khan is so personal and I don't think it's a coincidence that that is so artistically excellent that it's coming from such a personal space for him. Mm -hmm. And I, I, that's, that's my hope is that he will, he will hear and get the love and the acceptance and the resonance from fans. Cause he wants to please them to, to do the things that, uh, aren't just, you know, he said, I'll, I'll, I'll dance for you. I'll be the clown for you. I'll be the romance for you. I would love for them all to say, be Shah Rukh Khan for us. The Shah Rukh Khan we haven't seen the Shah Rukh Khan who wants to put all, all of himself out there with his craft in ways we haven't even seen before with no other thing but the abandonment of self in the pursuit of his highest artistic self that would cause everyone to i think marvel because i think he's an exceptionally good actor mm. and um he's also an exceptionally great entertainer yeah he is um and i would love that too but i don't i don't know that that's ever going to happen i think it will um, be, I'm an optimist. <laughs> I'd love to talk to him about it. Well, I think you, I think you, I think that's one of the issues you fall into with Shah Rukh Khan is you want that side to come out of him because that's what you love, obviously. As opposed to what I've grown to start loving about Shah Rukh Khan is what he said at the very end. He's I serve reality with chocolate right. flavored popcorn. That's exactly the line <laughs> I was thinking of. He uh, does, and a big fizzy soda on yeah. the side, uh, which is a. It's obviously not what obviously you would do if you were obviously in his position. Um, or what I prefer to see yes, on screen. Yes, obviously, I know that. Yeah. Um, but it's a it's it's something that I also love about Kieran Johar cinema is that it's 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 him um, to the fullest, uh, while also just pleasing the audience and and having a good time. Uh, will he might do a film? Like who, who, we'll see what the combination is with Rashkumar Rani films because he usually blends those two pretty darn well it, in it, terms of commercial and yeah. Um, this is going to be an interesting comparison, but I have a similar frustration uh, with uh, the things I watched Sylvester Stallone do over his career because you think he's a better actor than I do. Well, and he's an extremely <laughs> intelligent and articulate man. Yeah. Um, Example, he for years has always wanted to do something about Edgar Allan Poe, but wrote it off because he said no one would accept that from me. Yeah. And and I I I I wish he hadn't done that to himself. I wish he hadn't written off the parts of him because his best work is the part that was the most personal and the part that was the most artistically true, which was Rocky. Mm -hmm. Um 
And he also did a really good job in the very first First Blood, which was not your stereotypical Rambo action film. And the third it, spy case. It was a drama. Uh, so he, he, I, you know, people get, he gives, the, he gives everybody what they want and what, what they got was entertaining. I just, um, I feel like there's far, far more. Not that he can't do the chocolate covered popcorn with the fizzy soda on the side, but I would really love to see more. I don't know that he cares though. The other like side. in terms of not, can not cares. I don't think that's the right word, but in terms of his prime goal is to make sure you're entertained as an audience, specifically his audience, which is the I know, Indian but audience. I wonder, I really wonder if what he was referring to about the silent moments and the emptiness that he can't pinpoint, I wonder how much, because he's such a complex, he's a beautifully complex human being and knows it. I, I wonder how much of the things that he has pursued and done and created of, of Shah Rukh Khan have have been because they're clearly in there have been the fear of failing like his dad and the desire that, to that succeed is there. and the desire the it's a weird double edge he because there's he, the fear of failing like dad but also wanting dad to be proud of yeah. his success the fact it's evident with what he said about his yeah. dad is that he does not want to be a failure correct and, and he, I, he if his dad was here i think he's doing all this because he wants his dad to be proud of him and how true. successful but it's very clear become. that for his dad success was a much deeper aspect than just what we, people would define as generic success that success to his dad was far more about personal aspects and i, I just truly do wonder i'm not trying to psychoanalyze it's what he said himself mm. i wonder how much of that feeling and if he still has it today because this was 10 years ago if that emptiness that he himself admitted i can't pinpoint what that is is um i i wonder if that might be connected to um and he might he might even agree and say it is but i then again i don't know because he'll do that all the time mm -hmm. he'll say something very definitive and then right on the, the heels of that say but I, I i'm not sure yeah and i it's a really beautiful attribute yeah he's, he's a really amazing person i don't know at all because obviously <laughs> even if you do these elevative stuff that that people that you can be proud of how many depressed actors are there <laughs> it's just it's oh, a yeah. depressing uh uh profession it's a wonderful profession well but it's also very especially where he is lonely yeah and a lot um, of a lot of careers don't go the way they wanted to even they were successes i, I mean I rain daniel day lewis is probably the happiest person out there no, rain rain <laughs> wilson wishes he could have appreciated the office more because he has admitted that during the run of the show he was just frustrated about why he wasn't becoming as big a name as will ferrell and jack black and even watching steve carell's career jump beyond the office he said i uh, here i was on one of the biggest shows and i i didn't get to really appreciate it because i was frustrated every day on why isn't my career jumping off like all these other guys because he's not as good of an actor. Well, and he he, but he missed, he missed the opportunity in well, the moment. I've, I've seen him in other stuff. He's not as talented of actors as Steve Carell. Very few are as Steve. Yeah, Carell. but that, the point isn't why didn't he make it. He the, sucks. The point is, isn't it sad he couldn't? He himself has admitted that he couldn't enjoy the success yeah. of that at the time. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, I would say I, I mean I want to talk with him, but. You could talk to this man for probably seven days straight, and you would not have scratched the surface on everything you want to talk to I'd him love about. To actually, read his uh, memoir. Somewhere. I would very much. Sounds very. I would very much. Is it the one that Anna Pam Chopra wrote, or is that a different thing? That yeah, I don't wrote? know. Let us know. know. Uh, but great interview, uh, as always. I don't think he's ever had a bad interview. No. Um, his best interview is yet to come because hasn't had it with us yet. I agree. Um, so we'll, we'll see <laughs> in the future. Uh, thank you so much uh, to the stupid baby who very us. much uh, it definitely helped out in our understanding of it uh, thank you so much let us know what other Shah Rukh Khan and other interviews we can react to down below Josh. <laughs>